Well, we're going to address the quintessential question that everybody asks, you know, should I tell my boss I have hearing loss? <laughs> should I say something? And, you know, it really depends on the job. It depends on the person, how you present it. And, and in some jobs, you absolutely have to say something because of, of danger. Uh, could be a factory, could be, you know, you're handling a tractor, you're handling a forklift, you are in construction, you know, you things can move pretty fast, and if you're not aware, you know, you, you could get hurt, or somebody else could get hurt. So y you really have to think through, you know, in the interview, in the interview, sometimes, you know, one-on-one, -on -one you'll do fine. But sometimes you won't. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that if you don't make, make it much of a big deal and you're relaxed about it and you know what kind of solutions can be applied, then, you know, um, it shouldn't be like a big thing, um, a big issue. Uh, some people will distrust, you know, okay, if this person doesn't hear, how are they going to do this? How are they going to do that? You know, so, you know, my boss and my previous job, they were pretty good about it. Um, you know, I told them right away because obviously I have cochlear implants and they're going to see them. <laughs> I don't hide mine. Uh, I think it's important for them to know that, uh, you know, that I have cochlear implants. You know, if there's a, an alarm that goes off or something that I need to know about in the building to, you know, let me know right away. Because sometimes I don't perceive the, I do perceive the alarms, but I have a dampener. So it, it'll sound like it's very far away. I know that it's an alarm, but what kind of alarm? <laughs> so, so sometimes I hear an alarm and I have to ask, you know, where is that alarm? What's going on? So, so th it's those kind of things that are really important for people to know. Um, you know, if I'm one on one with a with a client and all that kind of stuff, I'm I'm good. I was going to need some type of technology to hear better on the phone because our phone system was was digital, was internet type based. And it was really hard to hear, not only for, for regular people, it was hard for them to hear, but then, you know, it was duplicated on my end, so I needed some extra tools to be able to handle the, the phone system. Um, and, and they did that. They were very generous and, and got the tool that I needed. Uh, they had, we did a mini mic too, and we plugged it into the phone, and then I, I could hear. So. Yikes, <laughs> that was expensive, but they were very, they were willing to to go that that mile. So I appreciated that. <coughs> and they were very open to uh, helping me out, you know. And they checked everything, made sure that you know I was comfortable, and I had what I needed, and I could hear okay. So <laughs> that was important because we were dealing with a lot of people. Um. So it just really depends on the circumstances. You really have to ask yourself, do I need to say this on the first day? Do I need to say this? You know, sometimes it's very noticeable and we can't get around it. You know, some people have a deaf speech that we call it, so it's going to be obvious. So, <laughs> so I can't say one answer applies to everyone. I think it really needs to be... Um, thought through, and, you know, you can consult with uh, a disability advocate and see what are the best circumstances for that job, for that t task. So, you know, you can always consult. Yes, in a way that you can say that, you know, it's none of their business, but in a way, if you're answering phones, 
if you are, you know, the front line with people in that business, it'll be important <laughs> for them to know. And you might need some extra tools. If you're in construction with a forklift, with a, you know, things that are flying and coming and going, you know, there might be some other tools that are needed in the garage, in the factory, just so you know what's coming and what's going and you don't get hit by some moving thing. <laughs> but <coughs> I've noticed that, you know, I'm very alert in terms of what's coming and going so I don't get hit. So I think that it's highly probable that people who were born deaf also have that innate innate uh, ability to, to feel, you know, what's around them and to avoid being hit. Um, but I understand there are so also tools and lights that can be placed in the, in the garage or in the factory area um, out of caution for, for the deaf so, or for myself um, so they don't get hit and there's a little bit more safety not only for you with hearing loss, but <coughs> for the other people, regular people, you know. Sometimes people are just looking at their phones and walk out into the aisle and boom, <laughs> you know. You're working at Home Depot and you get hit by one of the forklifts. So, you know, I think that, you know, there are tools that can be used, you know, and, and sometimes you have to do a little bit of research before before you look into that job and say, okay, these are the things that can be placed, you know, for you to have some knowledge. And if, if the boss hesitates because of possible danger, you say, well, there are these tools that, you know, can alert me that something is coming. <coughs> these are some tools that you can put up uh, for the fire alarm. And then I'll know that the fire alarm went off and and I need to go to the nearest exit. So it's it sometimes you have to have also the knowledge uh, to of those needed tools, and so you can show your knowledge and also offer assistance. You know these are the things that I know are good solutions for uh, this area this kind of job. So it's, it's not a dead end, as we know, as we know. So the big question of should we, should we say something about our hearing loss, it just depends. It's a complicated question. Um, for me, for me, I just had, I felt like I needed to be honest because I am fully deaf and I use cochlear implants. It doesn't mean that I'm going to hear everything. It doesn't mean that I'm going to capture everything. It doesn't mean that because I have cochlear implants, the problem is fixed. Uh, it, having cochlear implants doesn't mean I'm never gonna say what. Um, it doesn't mean when I'm working with a difficult client with behavioral issues and they're out of control and crying and upset. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna fully understand them, but it means that I also have a tool to wait for them to calm down and for me to proceed in a conversation. So, you know, I've seen that the, the people without hearing loss have a hard time dealing with people who are, you know, hysterical or losing their ability to, uh, to engage, <laughs> so, and I always tell them just just wait, just wait for them to to get through it, <laughs> and then you can talk to them. If you try to talk over them, or try, you know, you're not going to hear them. They're not going to understand you, and it might get worse. So just wait. So, you know, I have some automatic tools <laughs> that that people with hearing could use. <laughs> so. Um, and on the phone, you know, if, if a client is, is drugged or drunk or, you know, it's going to be hard for anyone to hear them, to understand them, understand their speech. And so it's going to be twice as hard for me. However, I just say, you know, 
because I'm a social worker, so all these years I've worked with people who are in difficult situations. And so my job has been to gradually pull them out, get them into safety, get them into a better life. And so sometimes when I first encounter them, they're out of control. <laughs> so it's like, oh, hi, I see you're out of control. <laughs> Let's work on this. So, so you know, um, sometimes when a person is out of control, it's, it's hard for anyone to hear them, to understand them. So, uh, and, you know, my boss <laughs> understood that. She said, ah, <laughs> I get that one. So I said, you know, in a time of crisis, sometimes I just got to back out and just say, hey, <laughs> let's work on this, uh, let's say Tuesday at 2 o'clock. <laughs> so, and I did that with, with one client. He was under the influence. Uh, he could answer yes or no, uh, but that was about it. So I said, how about we meet on Tuesday at 1 o'clock and we'll sit down but you gotta be clean. You gotta be clean. Because otherwise, I don't know if your answers are true or not. And uh, we gotta make your housing situation better. So he, he promised he would be clean. And um, so <coughs> he thanked me and we parted ways. So the good thing is I found him because he was lost in action. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it, as you can see, it just really depends on on the job and what is what is safe, what is safety for you, what is what is safe for the other person, what is what is it, what does it look like, what tools are needed, and if you don't know, look it up, you know. Um, and some just are behind a desk and and don't have that. Uh, they talk with uh, I don't know salespersons or whatever it might be. And so there's no, no danger in that. Um, I was usually on the streets with difficult people. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I had my run. I had a run and I had a very good one for over 20 years. So that's, that's, that's my line. That's what I think, you know, needs to happen. It just really depends on the job and what is the environment of that job and you know what kind of things do you think need to be put in place for you to be safe for you to be able to communicate um, for your employees for your your co-workers to be able to communicate with you your customers so you really have to think it through when you're looking for those jobs and some you've already done them, and you know it can be done uh, safely. You know, you already have the knowledge. So it's just that that company just downsized and closed, and now you're back on, on the road looking for another job. So you know you have experience already on, on what can be safe uh, for you and for the company. So, uh, so then there's no question you know what needs to happen and if you if you show that confidence in that relaxed manner oh it's not a big deal then you know everybody else around you will see that it's not a big deal some people will have questions about it but you can deal with them when the time comes so i think that's that's one thing i wanted to put out there you know in terms of job seeking, changing jobs, um, how to deal with your hearing loss and the need for this particular job or a job you really know you can do and you do well. Uh, and so, and it, 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 it depends on the environment really. Um, and you need to, I think, you know, for safety reasons at some point, you know, it's good to let them know I'm a little hearing impaired or I'm completely deaf, but some of us can't hide it. <laughs> some of us just can't hide it. So, <laughs> so at any job, I've let them know I have cochlear implants and these are the things that I need so to work safely and to work effectively.
So those are my comments. Um, you can put down your experiences. Uh, some people have had a lot of negative experiences. <coughs> some people have had, you know, a very positive, and this last job I had was, was very positive. And I was surprised, <laughs> but it was very positive. People are very supportive, and the company was very open to helping me whichever way I needed. So, so I, I thank them. Um, so yeah, share your experiences, whether you chose to share about your hearing loss or you chose not to share, and, and we'll see how the responses went. Um, but uh, you'll see that the, the responses have a wide range of, of answers because it just all depends. So, but if you're in that position, uh, feel free to, and you're stuck and you're not sure, should I say something, should I not say something, uh, feel free to call an advocate you know, a disability advocate and see what they suggest and how they can give you support. If you are new to this channel, welcome. And if you want to assist me in helping the channel grow, feel free to uh, like and post and share. And that will help this channel grow and have um, resources for other people who are also hearing impaired. Uh, you can subscribe if you feel like you're going to come back and this, this uh, channel will be helpful to you, then uh, great. You can go ahead and subscribe. You don't have to, and any of these actions are completely free. So welcome to all of you Pathfinders, and I'll see you in the next one.